You spend a zillion and a half hours on your model. It looks perfect. You create your textures meticulously. It looks perfect. You set up your scene, you set up your cameras, you set up your light, you hit render, and everything looks like... This video has been made possible by RenderHub.com, the premier site for selling and buying your 3D related content, such as 3D models, HDRI files, sound effects, textures, print ready models, and much, much more. Okay, everybody, well, when I talk about bad renders, I'm not talking about technical render setups. So I'm not talking about ambient occlusion. I'm not talking about sample rates and all that. What I'm talking about is a lighting, a lens choice, camera choice, and composition. Now, these are basically all film and photography related topics, but for some reason, a lot of 3D artists avoid these topics because they think it has nothing to do with 3D. Well, uh, I uh, can tell you that it has everything to do with 3D because once your model is done and you are ready to do your actual render, what you're basically doing is taking a snapshot of whatever you have created. Now, in other words, you're taking a photo. Uh, if you want to have a better end result in your render, it's important to understand the focal distance of a lens, to understand whether it's important to use a crop sensor camera or a normal camera, and so forth and so on. Now, what we're looking at right here is an app called Set a Light 3D Studio. It's specifically developed for photographers, but it is immensely important for 3D artists to basically train their skills in lighting cameras and lenses and i'll just show you a couple of things it's not going to be a full tutorial but just to give you a little bit of an idea what you can do here right so we got a scene with a room we got a backdrop we got a model we got two lights going on and a camera right now everything in this room i can basically click and change so if i double click on this room right here on the left you'll see that i chose a preset a medium room but I can go in and choose a large room if I want, or a small room. Now, does that have an effect on my light? Oh yes, it does, big time. Okay, so let's leave that on medium. I can even go in and choose an exact dimension for this room. Let's say I model an interior in Maya, and I want to have a light set up that mimics that room perfectly. I can match that, right? I can even change the color of my ceiling if I want to, if I want a red ceiling. I can go in here and even load a texture for my floors presets, right? So you can do all of that stuff. Now, that's the room. I can go in here and double click on the backdrop, right? Custom background. Again, I can go in here and choose black if I want, smoky gray if I want, just to give you an idea. You can play with all these settings. How about the model? Can I change the model's position? Well, let's click on her and see. As I do that, up here I got a pose slider. And here you see a whole bunch of poses with this guy. Now, as I move this, you see that she's moving her pose as well. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how does that help me as a 3D artist? Let's say you made a model in ZBrush of a female character looking to the right. There you go. That can uh, be used as a, um, a setup if you want to figure out what kind of lighting you want to use, right? Now, I'm moving around the model here, but what I can also do, of course, is just click on the camera kind of move the camera like that, right? Okay, so let's talk about lighting a little bit. Let me set that up, yeah. Okay, so this is a lighting setup so far. I got a light here, I got a light here. Let's say I want to turn this one off. I'm just gonna click on it and click on the little power button and immediately see an effect here. Let's say I want this light to be a bit more intense. Let's click on it and push that slider up or down. You can do all of that. Let's say I want to bring a new light into the scene. So we're going to take this one and I'm just going to hit delete. Let's go in here and go to mono lights. Let's say I want to have a beauty dish. Let's double click on it. There you go. We're going to push that to the back there and we're going to push it up. And as you can see, we have a tremendous amount of control over what's going on here. And now we are kind of creating a hair light like that, right? Now, um, lights, we talked about that. Cameras, up here. Right now, we're using a full-frame camera. Now, we have a fixed 200 millimeter lens here. 
let's say I want a wide shot of the whole wall basically. I'll go in here and I'll change it to 11 to 16 millimeters. And now I basically got the entire room. Now you might not know about what lens does what, but when you play around with all this, you will get a much better understanding of it at least, right? Now here, for example, and this is a very important one for 3D artists, the aperture setting. Now I'll do a quick little setup here to give you an idea how that works. So I'm gonna go into models here. Let me, I don't know, take, um, take her. Okay, so I'm gonna, oh, same outfit. Let's give her a different outfit, there you go. So we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna push her to the back somewhere that we can actually see her. Okay, so we'll take her, we'll move her to the front a bit, like that, and then we'll take her, there you go. All right, now what you see in photography all the time, and this is something that 3D artists try to mimic all the time, is a thing called bokeh. Now bokeh, uh, basically related to depth of field, will create the illusion that something in the back is blurry and something in the front is in focus, or vice versa. Now. How you do that is by playing with the aperture. And the aperture is basically this guy up here with that f-stop thing, f8.0. Now, if I were to change this to, let's say, something below f2, you would probably see that the lady in the back here will become very blurry. Let's see if that's true. Let's go in here, let's do 1.8. Now, because of that, the camera lens is wide open, meaning that we have way too much light in our scene, okay? So I'm gonna click on this light right here, and I'm gonna bring down the intensity, and I'm gonna take this one and bring that down as well. And then we're gonna focus on our model here. Now you can see that we're a bit too close here, so we're just gonna go in. Let's just focus on her for a minute. Uh, let's go and do 2.5, right? So you get the idea, right? So at 2.5, the model in the front is basically fully in focus, right? And the model in the back here is completely blurry. Now, if we were to go in here and change that aperture to let's say eight or so, a couple of things will happen. First of all, because that lens will be pushed closed almost, right? Is you'll get less light so the scene will become very dark, but at the same time, both models will pretty much be in focus, right? So let me click on F8. Let's increase that light intensity, because like I said, it became quite dark. And now you can see that both models are in focus. So that's just a one small thing to give you an explanation of how powerful that is, right? So uh, I'll put a link below. This is not a sponsored video. They're not paying me to do this, right? Check it out. Um, whether you're a photographer or not, that's fine. But if you're a 3D artist, definitely check it out. Tons of things to customize. Let me know in the comments if you think it's helpful and let me know if you're gonna use it to improve your work, right? Well, that's it for this uh, quick little video. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.